Hello everyone. Welcome to episode 14 of the Shawnee Developer Series. My name is Eric Nance and I'm delighted that you joined us today. We are concluding our multi-part series with our studio software engineer and member of the Shiny development team, Barrett Schlerke, as he gives us an awesome overview of the Learn R package and why Shiny is such a critical component to making all the powerful processing in this package work seamlessly. He's going to give us a few demos and give us some great examples of how Learn R can be used to supercharge teaching, data science, or any other concepts that an educator would like to use. So let's not wait any longer. Let's dive into our chat with Barrett Schlerke. Teams, and speaking of learning, um, one thing that I, I've known for a while, but I'm not sure if our audience does, is that Shiny plays a prominent role in one of the excellent packages that has come from our studio and how we can educate others on any sort of topic, and it's called Learn R. So maybe if you give our audience a bit of an overview of how Learn R works, and maybe some of the things you're proud of of that, and maybe some demos about that too. Absolutely. Yeah, so Learn R is a great package to, you know, get people involved with R without even knowing that they're doing the R programming language, because it's in the browser. Uh, we can deploy something on Shiny Apps IO, and they can just look at the R Markdown output, which you know people are familiar with, but they don't. They may not know that there's things like exercises or quiz questions that are actually powered by R underneath the hood. And this is nice for uh, authors in that they can create exercises for users in a familiar language that they're used to with R, and they can then host it somewhere else or uh, locally. Uh, for students to, to do on their own time or uh, so they have it like running already. And I think that's like a very powerful part learner. So for some examples though, I'd like to take you to the RStudio education primers. They've done a lot of work to really nail down like some of these steps that users have when like, hey, I'm working with data or I'm visualizing data. What are some things that can remind me what I should do or what is able, I'm able to do? Um, and they have many different tutorials to go through. And some of them, you know, they're on their way. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think they're just so nice. So let's actually take a peek at uh, just, you know, the basics. And we'll do uh, visualization basics. So this is what a learner tutorial uh, will normally look like. We have a sidebar on the left and we have our content on the right. So this will be our topic, and then these are some different sections. So I'll say continue, and yep, we're gonna go through. And here we have just a quick quiz question. It's like, okay, uh, bigger cars uh, consume more fuel. Cars with bigger engines use more fuel. Let's say that one. Submit answer, great. So we get some immediate feedback. We let users know, you know what were some correct answers. Uh, and it's, it's really nice. Um, these questions now are actually built using shiny modules so you oh, can have right my alley <laughs> absolutely yes and so like these modules you can have 50 of these questions on one page and it's not overloading to shiny server it's only one instance of shiny it's not 50 instances so that's really good and it's not 50 iframes either outsourcing to ever somewhere else good um, and then here we have an exercise. And this doesn't really look too intimidating uh, to, to newer users um, compared to like maybe opening up an IDE and saying library, doing all that. So here, you know, they say type in MPG, okay? And I'll hit run code. Um, it's thinking about it and hey, you know, we got a, a DT data frame already set up. It's got page scrolling. You know, this is all automatically done for you, knowing that it, a data frame was returned. That's really slick. And you didn't have to know about how that output was generated. You just had to just type the name of it and, and Learner was smart enough to know the effective way of rendering it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a few of them uh, that uh, work, work like that. Uh, so data frame is one of them. And then also uh, HTML widgets are passed through as well. So we will, if you return a widget in your example, we will display that full HTML widget. Um, but 
also just to say submit answer. Uh, we can also grade their exercises as well and, and get feedback to the users. Um, so I think this is this is great. I think this demo is really good, but it also you know leaves like more for the user to want or the author to want in that it's pretty minimal, it's pretty clean. There's not much going on for colors or styling. And Allison Horst has done a really good job with a learner tutorial uh, for the NA Naniar package. I can never say it right. <laughs> uh, Nick Tierney, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she, she did a wonderful job uh, looking at this. And it, let's just load up that tutorial. So you know, I'll have the links um, later that we can post. But she's done full, you know, illustrations that can be added in just like regular images. But she's oh, also this is gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you see it and you go, that's not learner. And then you look at the components and you go, oh, okay, it is. Wow, that's so pretty. <laughs> and oh, that's yeah. that's amazing. And and you know, with just a little investment and some styling, you can just totally transform the experience of these things. And that's certainly something. Obviously, this is a case of learn art, but even my shiny apps, I'm trying to get away from kind of the cookie cutter template look. And this is certainly inspiration of how powerful that can be. Yes, absolutely. And it's it's neat to see like even the buttons change. They were they're orange now, and you know the styling's just a little different. Uh, so if I run the code, it'll produce the same answer. Um, I can also start over. But yes, her, her work on this one is just awesome. Uh, yeah, and I do agree though, adding just a little bit of styling to some of the shiny apps just elevates them. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'll have to look at this one <laughs> as well. I'm sure I have some colleagues in my group that would love to play with something like this. Um, so how, how difficult is it to get started with Learner? Is it pretty easy to get up and running quickly in your opinion? I, I think it's it's very easy. It's very uh, familiar, uh, like with what we do on. So if I actually pull up the source for Allison's um, presentation or Allison's tutorial, uh, if I go into the Explore Tutorial RMD, the the thing that we need to do is to say output learner tutorial. And then in your setup chunk, just say library learner. That's the main requirement. Um, beyond that, we just need to um, have exercises. So exercise um, is true. So we just say exercise equals true. Um, and now all of a sudden, this whole R chunk is turned into an exercise. Nice. Like there's, nothing else that the authors need to write um the other one is uh quiz questions but i don't think know if she has any in here um uh, i don't believe so but they would be just a regular r chunk that is not an exercise and you mm -hmm. would be able to say you know question you know answer is a answer is b and correct is true um submit like that's that's all you would need to do in in one one of these lines very nice. Very nice. Um, so I'll, we'll definitely have links to getting started with LearnR in, in the notes for this. But it sounds like, yeah, Shiny is giving you all a great way to have these different, you know, modules of like the code running, the questions answer without you having to be an expert in building all that infrastructure from scratch. That's really cool. And it sounds like we've seen some really nice extensions that Learner can plug into. Maybe we can see some of that too. Yes. Uh, so... so one of the quick things that we grab gravitate towards with questions, quiz questions, is ranking questions. So, mm -hmm. you know, what's your favorite cookie? Let's rank them and see what the answer is. Um, and so Sortable JS is a JavaScript library that had already kind of solved ranking problems or ranking in the HTML. And it really quickly extends to, um, you know, we can use it for our quiz questions. So what Sortable did is we made an HTML widget package that will just use this Sortable JS library underneath the hood. And then we connected it to Learner by have, uh, using Learner's question API. 
And so this is just the widget here. But if I go to a demo, we have our sortable library. And this is the code that's being used. We say, hey, give me a question rank. Here's my title. I have an answer of my insects. And if you happen to give me the reverse order of the insects, tell them that the answer is wrong. And mm. by the way, other direction. <laughs> yeah, give them a little hint along the way. That's always good. Yep. You can have many forms of these. You can have like uh, many different ways so that you can give them custom messages for each style of wrong answer. Mm -hmm. And I, I always like to say that, you know, hey, uh, let's allow it, users to, to retry. Um, so let's do this ourselves. Let's do the ant, bumblebee, dragonfly in reverse order. And I'll submit it. And incorrect, by the way, other direction. <laughs> So I'll say try again, and I do it again here. And okay, in alphabetical order, I hit submit, correct, moving on. And this is great. You can allow users to put, put in their own, uh, or not, the authors can put in their own choices or even complex HTML. It doesn't need to be just plain text. You could have images in here. You can have full HTML DOM, it's great. Boy, this to me opens up a lot of possibilities that you don't just have to have the typical kind of quiz answers or questions. You could bring another widget into play. Um, I know Sorable, like, like this one here, is, is extremely powerful, but there seems like there's opportunity to bring other widgets in play here too for the future. If anyone is listening on that, I do have a dream that someone could have a leaflet map and I could mm -hmm. click on it and add points and then i could say you know submit my answer and if it worked then the the points would highlight up where you'd say ah you click close enough to the cities you know thank you uh, and you know leaflets there uh we just need to make the glue so <laughs> yeah well i was gonna say leaflet's a great example i'm thinking thing, things like plotly too like anything where you could let the user explore a visual and maybe try to get the gist of what it's trying to convey. Yeah, I, I'm just being like a dreamer here. That would be really cool to see. So certainly I hope this is kind of like a template for others to follow for how that might work. So anything else about Learner you wanna show us about? But I will mention that the next release of Learner will have multi-language support. And so just as a, an explanation of what, what this will entail, Currently, all exercises are executed using R code, mm -hmm. but underneath the hood, it's just an R Markdown document, right? But R Markdown understands many languages thanks to Knitter. Things like Python using Reticulate or MySQL or even uh, Bash, you know, you could do that. And we've now developed, uh, thanks to the help with Nishal, uh, summer intern, um, he made it so that uh, the exercises are submitted using R Markdown fully, and that allows for any language to be supported. Um, so I have some demos that I'm working on uh, to make sure that the UI is going to be up to date, where you know I type in SQL code and it will return an answer. Wow, yeah, that's going to be so exciting to see on, on multiple levels. Yeah, I can't wait to can't wait to play with that because I'm one of those people that. I'll hop from R to other languages from time to time and be able to educate others about that process would be really cool too. Yep. Yes, no, it, we're very excited about that. Um, and I think it, it'll be very a powerful tool that you could have an R exercise and then a Python exercise in the same web page. Yep, now across all the data science spectrum of tools. Yep, that's awesome. Yeah, we'll, yes. we'll have links to all these great demos you've had learner in, in the show notes. Um, um, so one thing I, I'd like to leave with is, um, you know, as somebody who's been working on the Shiny team for a while, you've been developing these extensions of Shiny itself and these other packages that are using Shiny in different ways. Um, what advice do you have to those in the audience that want to take their Shiny development skills to the next level instead of just like the basic tutorials? Now they're doing more production grade applications at work whether it's by choice or they're forced to. Um, uh, what, what kind of advice do you have for those to take that extra climb up the ladder, so to speak? Mm, that's a, it's a really good one. It's, it's a very uh, open-ended question. Um, my, my gut reaction is that uh, 
you know, Shiny is quite fast and like, but we can only deliver your code as fast as it's calculated. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't be afraid to use profviz and find out where uh, the bottlenecks are in, in your code. Um, also, using a little bit of CSS, external CSS, um, or templates to, to give it a little bit of flair uh, go a really long way. As we saw with um, Allison's demo and the, the her uh, NA <laughs> Nani R <laughs> uh, tutorial, it it um, it really had a wow factor. And yes. you know, just a little bit of effort in in the CSS makes a lot of difference. And Shiny is not going to impose or try to impose you know certain themes, so we're not going to be adding them uh, ourselves. Um, the other things I can think of, you know, uh, don't be afraid to use React Log. I think it's, uh, you know, enable that option and then go ahead and, and run your app and see what's going on, even if you just want to see the app in action. Uh, I think it's it's really good, good feature. Yeah, well, I mean, I was saying during your React Log demo, just that visual presentation of what's happening as Shiny itself is a highly visual thing that you're making. Any web interface is obviously visual to the end user that helps you as a developer wrap your head around all the logic that you've imposed in the app and maybe you didn't intend to impose certain patterns but then you see what those patterns are and you're like eh, not the best idea or maybe it's like hey i nailed it the first time which doesn't always happen with me to be transparent <laughs> i don't always get yeah. reactivity right the first time but seeing it will definitely give me weeds on that for sure so certainly those are great great points couple of the use cases that I've seen is that uh, users thought that if I only update this one value that that single output is only being calculated so why is it taking so long right and all of a sudden they'll uh, realize that one of the other outputs which might be a heavy output is reading that value or having a connection to it in some way that shouldn't or maybe should have been isolated and um, now all of a sudden uh, it's being in like the whole app is being invalidated and recalculating. Um, so that's always a uh, maybe unpleasant surprise, but you know, <laughs> it's nice to uncover at least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the first step is awareness. You know, you got to know you have a problem <laughs> before you can solve it. So. <laughs> Very cool. Um, Baron, I mean, we could, we could talk all day about all the awesome stuff you're doing. Um, for those that uh, want to get a hold of you, maybe in some of the work you're doing, where are the best ways they can reach you um, online if they want? I think uh, Twitter might be the easiest one for everyone. Uh, okay. You know, email is a little bit too formal today. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, Twitter at Schlerke, Um That's I'm the only one. I try to make a handle on that name. It's pretty unique. So <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Um, but yeah, Twitter should be good. Awesome. Well, certainly we greatly appreciate showing us off all these great extensions of Shiny and how it can up our game, so to speak, of Shiny development. And we really. You're welcome back on the on the series anytime as you as you make these great feature additions. So, thank you, Barrett, awesome. for joining us. Thank you. I I appreciate you having me. It's it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. All right, everybody. We'll be back right after this. All right. I hope you enjoyed this and on previous episodes where we talked about so many great concepts with Barrett that it definitely could not fit into just one. Um, so certainly, as always, if you want to look at the resources that Baron and I mentioned throughout the chat, head to shinydevseries.com and you'll see this latest episode posted right there with all the links that Baron has assembled for us. And we got some great content coming up in the very near future. Already produced some great recordings and I will say that the next installments are using this brand new technical setup that I've set up here. And I think you're going to really like it. So that's going to conclude episode 14. As always, if you want to get in touch with me, um, the best place to do that, you can give me a shout on Twitter. I am at the RCast. You can also feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube video posting of this episode. And definitely head to shinydevseries.com for all the previous episodes and resources associated with those. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.